I just want them back. <laughs> I just I just want them to come back. And if if they're not safe right now, that's what's that's what's tearing me apart. Because if they are safe, they're coming back. But if they're not, this 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 has got to stop. Like somebody has to come forward. So we're all watching Chris's first interview, basically live on the five o'clock news. Or did you guys get into an argument before? She left? It wasn't. It wasn't like an argument. We had an emotional conversation, but I'll leave it at that. But it's. it's I just want. I want everybody to just come home. Like right, wherever they're at, come home. That's what I want. Chris talked about how he and his wife had had an emotional conversation right before she went missing, which I thought was strange. Um, that you would talk about that on the news. Shannon, Bella, Celeste, if you're out there, just, just just come back. Like if somebody has her, just please bring her back. The concern that he professed to have for his wife and kids seemed very feigned. Seemed very cold and calculated. Even though people grieved differently, he was so extraordinarily calm and was internally inconsistent in what he was saying and how he was saying it, that it raised a lot of red flags. It just really struck everyone as what in the world is going on? I was definitely hoping to catch Shanann leaving with Bella and Celeste. I was hoping we might catch somebody coming and picking them up to take them on a play date like Chris had said, but we had picked up no other motion or anything like that coming from their house. The camera on the front of Nathan's house shows that truck leaving at 545, and a part of a thorough investigation at a very early stage is creating a timeline. What time did the husband leave? Where was the wife, where were the children at these particular times? And they're really starting to fill in those gaps. Chris, I had noticed that he wasn't watching the tape. He was looking down at his phone a lot. He was looking away a lot. And every time he did say something, he was trying to prove a point. No cars came through, because I guarantee it with the headlights, it picked up the headlights. And if I didn't said that at 5.27, my garage door was left open. I definitely was watching Chris's body language. And at that point in time, he definitely could have been freaking out because his wife was gone and his children were gone. I just personally thought the way he was acting was a little strange. As a father, like my eyes would have never left that screen. During the interview that agents were doing with Watts, concurrently, the public is still calling in tips. Frederick gets a tip that at a local Walmart that there was a sighting of possibly Shanann and the girls. Obviously that raises everybody's hopes that maybe this whole thing has just been blown out of proportion and we do have an innocent explanation. Officers dispatched over to that Walmart to review the surveillance video um, to determine whether or not this in fact is um, Shanann and the girls and, and the, the whole matter can be put to a close. Okay, thank you for yeah. coming in. Yep. Um, so I've been doing some other things while you were here. So there's a, a sighting at Walmart. Is Bella the oldest? Yes. Does she have long hair? Well, if, if you let the curls down. How long? The, if the curls would probably come like right here. Okay. So this is a picture from surveillance. You see that? Yeah, it's just the hair color looks a little off. Yeah. I mean, look how long that braid is. Is that yeah. look, does that look right? No, that braid's too long. Is that like your wife? Hair is too long. Okay. okay. Close inspection reveals very quickly that this was not um, Shanann and the girls, and, and obviously hope was dashed at that point in time. When you're going through different options, Chris definitely wasn't a high option at first. He seemed to be a wonderful dad, wonderful husband. He kept his house up nice and clean. He definitely seemed like that average everyday guy. I had never heard any confrontation. For me personally, Chris wasn't the first thing I thought of because of the way he acted up until this point. He seemed to be a good dad and just a 
nice guy. And you can't think of anywhere she'd want to go? She go for walks around here? No, I go for runs. She goes, she doesn't really go for do anything as far as go for walks or anything. And you've talked to all the friends you guys have around the area? <coughs> and what was the conversation this morning you guys had? It was about the selling the house and the separation. And how'd she take that? We were both pretty emotional, both crying. And then did you see her before you went to work? Did mm -hmm. you say anything to her? When she went back, like, when she told me she was going to go to her friend's house and be with the kid, take the kids over there. Oh, she told you she was taking the kids yeah. to her friend's house? Yeah. She didn't say who, though? Oh, no, no. No, but she was still in bed when that happened. And this was after the conversation? Yeah. It was between, like, 4 and 5 a.m. I woke up about 4 o'clock. Our, our main concern is to make sure she's okay and the kids are okay. So, um, if you hear a peep from her, just call us, and we'll call you. Just call that number, someone will answer that phone 24-7. Okay. So, Sweet. And then just leave your contact info in an office. Right. Right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. In the last hour, here's what we've learned from investigators. They say a family friend is who first called to report Watts missing, and they went out to the house on a welfare call after they couldn't get a hold of her on Monday afternoon. I think the media interest in part, and the public interest in part, is driven by the fact that they're a beautiful family, a young family. Interest is only heightened in this case as more time goes by. Tonight, police issued a missing endangered alert for Shannon Watts and her two daughters. Her husband says she's been missing since Monday morning. And a lot of you have been very active on Facebook tonight, reposting family pictures and hope that someone out there saw something. Shannon's life is so accessible through her Facebook page. Uh, you can spend hours scrolling through there and feel like you know who she is, which makes you care, right? When a person is no longer just a statistic or a data point, you can empathize with her and her family, because you look at her kids and you see your own kids, or you look at her house and her dreams and you see your own house and your own dreams, and then see how quickly it can all be put into jeopardy.